Welcome to the War Academy channel. Today we have a very interesting program, in which we are going to analyze the enormous offensives launched by the Soviet Union in 1944, these being the most important of the entire conflict. And it is that although by the late date of May 1944, Germany still retained a lot of territory and allies, and could even dream of the possibility of resisting it indefinitely. This situation would change radically in just a couple of months. What we are going to see next is how the Red Army was unstoppably staggering one offensive after another throughout the Eastern Front, this being called the Soviet Steamroller. Although during the year of 1943, it can still be considered that there were important offensives and counter-offensives on the part of both sides, and there was a certain balance. As that year was ending, everything tilted for the Soviet Union. After continuous withdrawals throughout the first months of 1944, the Germans were able to establish a new front line in which they had practically been expelled from all Soviet territory, with the exception of the Baltic states and part of Belarus. With the situation being like this, by March 1944, the Soviet General Staff began an in-depth analysis to determine what the next steps should be. The objective as always was to obtain the greatest possible benefits, both military and political, with the next round of offensives. For the first time, they had in their favor that the Western Allies had finally promised them that by May or June of that year, they would open a second front in France. This, on the one hand, would make the Germans have to divert troops from the Eastern Front to deal with the invasion, so their troops would encounter less resistance than in previous years. On the other hand, the presence of their allies in France threatened the occupation of European territory that they wanted. What if the British and Americans broke through to Berlin or even Warsaw, while they remained stuck far away? It was clear that they would have to speed up their march and get there before the Westerners. As we have analyzed in other programs, at the beginning of the war, Stalin was prone to order multiple offensives across the front without any kind of concentration or order. This was changing little by little and by this time, he was already delegating to the criteria of his generals, who established more staggered and concentrated offensives. The first option that the Soviet general staff considered, facing the summer of 1944, was to continue attacking from the south, towards Poland and the Balkans. This was intended to eliminate several German allies and make them change sides take over the entire Balkan region, and penetrate deep into Poland, making German positions in the Baltic more untenable. As a negative point, we have that this option greatly extended the Soviet supply line, and pinned their troops on quite difficult terrain, while leaving a large swath of Soviet territory still in German hands. The second option, this being the one most expected by the Germans, was to make a major attack from the below Russian salient towards the Baltic things in East Prussia. This was intended to isolate the entire North and Center German army group in a large pocket. However, this possibility was soon ruled out, as the German army was still considered too powerful to try to bring down with just one blow. The third option that was contemplated was to carry out an attack in the northern sector with Finland and against the Baltic states. Although this meant leaving Finland out of the war, and advancing to the Baltic Sea, the gains in territory were minimal and everything would be carried out with very unattractive frontal attacks, which, even if successful, would lead to a dead end. No strategic outlet against the Baltic coast. The last option was to attack Army Group Center in Belarusia, thereby extending the front line to East Prussia and Poland. With this they would isolate the German Northern Group, and they would get better positions to launch future offensives, in the direction of Warsaw and Berlin. After assessing all these options, it was clear that they could not do them all at the same time, as in previous years if they had intended, nor could they focus on just one of them, since the race to Berlin had begun and they had to hurry. What was finally decided was to launch the four operations in a staggered manner, starting in the north and continuing to the south. This plan was kept in the utmost secrecy, and only a handful of men, these being Stalin himself, Zhukov, Vasilevsky and Antonov, knew the development of the entire plan. 
The rest of the generals thought that their offensive would be the only one. The dates set for the start of each offensive were as follows. By June 10th, the attack would take place in Finland. Thirteen days later, the offensive against the German army group center in Belarus would be launched near Minsk. On July 13th, once the Germans had sent their reserves to try to plug the brakes of the previous offensive, the Soviets would then launch themselves from their rear from the below Russian balcony near Lublin. Finally, after the great blow given to this entire strip of territory, and after widely defeating the different German armies, by the end of August, the Soviets would launch themselves on Romania, after which they would advance throughout the Balkan region. By launching these offensives in stages, the Soviets could distribute their forces from one place to another, always achieving a great numerical superiority, which allowed them to break through any German defense without too much difficulty. It is precisely for this reason, why the initiative, when organizing an offensive is so important. Well, while the Germans had to divide their forces evenly across the front, waiting for a Soviet attack that they did not know where it was going to come from, the Red Army could continuously concentrate on the chosen points and attack violently. Always with superiorities of more than 10 to 1. Although the Red Army was more numerous than the German in general terms, this strategy allowed them to be able to move their troops from one place to another, and with this it seemed that this superiority was even greater than it really was. This Soviet plan for the summer of 1944 was fixed between the months of March and April, and once it began in early June with that first attack on Finland, everything went relatively well, and the schedule could be met without too many setbacks. The final impact of this offensive was that in just two and a half months, from June to the end of August, Germany lost its Finnish, Romanian and Bulgarian allies, as well as the Baltic states. They lost their most important oil sources, and the entire Balkan region, after also having to withdraw from Greece. They had to fall back to the Vistula River and the East Prussian border, leaving an entire army group isolated in Kurland. As if that were not enough, and while this was happening on the Eastern Front, on the Western they lost France, due in part to the fact that they saw each other again in a colossal war on two fronts. Finally, and although Hitler had already suffered many attempted attacks throughout his career, on July 20, 1944, he suffered the most important of them, also carried out by high-ranking army officers. All these points lead us to the conclusion that these were the most important three months of the conflict, and they ended up completely tilting the balance towards the Allies, and cleared up all the doubts that could remain about how the conflict was going to end. Although the Germans were still able to reorganize after the great defeat they suffered, they could not establish any other solid defensive line with guarantees, and as Guderian himself commented, the Eastern Front is like a house of cards, it is enough to break it at one point so that it comes down in its entirety. Interestingly, and as you know, this was the same phrase used by the Germans themselves in 1941, when they were preparing to attack the Soviet Union. And what do you think? Do you consider that the Soviet offensive plan carried out this summer was the best they developed in the entire war? Do you think the Germans could do something to put up with it? I await your answers in the comment box. If you want to delve into this matter, I'll leave you The Clash of the Titans books by David Glantz and The Bagration book by Antonio Mungas in the description, along with the program we did with Carlos Caballero about this operation. That's all, subscribe and support this channel if you like this program, and see you in the next one, see you soon.